Hey, it's Retro Buddy with a 1.16 build tutorial. Are you planning on starting a new world with friends when the Nether update hits and you need a starter cabin? Well, look no further because this one's got bunk beds. Come on, check it out. Hey guys, I'm going to start by talking about some of the features of the cabin, but if you want to skip to the tutorial, there's a link down below you can click. So I'm going to start by giving you a little tour of the place. This is the front entrance, little flower pots on either side. On the first floor, you've got everything you need for your basic amenities, like a furnace and crafting table, some light storage and anvil, and this really just charming fireplace. It's a nice place to come home to. Then upstairs, we got bunk beds for you and your pals. I'm gonna be playing on a realm server with my friends, so I wanna make sure that we can all uh, sleep. And uh, more storage for everyone for personal items. And we got this nice balcony out here where you can come and watch the sunrise with you and all your best buddies. Some other nice starter base features are a little place to, for your horses and storing horse-related items. And some more external storage. We've got a place for maps and a place to keep your first map and a uh, place for mining storage. Then we have this little well that I'm gonna show you how to make that can lead down into maybe an enchanting room if you want down here, or this is where your mine can begin, or both of those things, whatever you want. I do wanna give a huge shout out to Corallis, who's an amazing YouTuber and hermit crafter. I took the inspiration for the roof of this cabin from his tutorial about how to build a barn slash stables. So if you haven't checked that video out, go check that out. That's where I got this idea from. All right, so the first thing you want to do is establish the base. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six blocks by seven blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and just fill that in. Next, we're going to take some oak logs and we're going to do four pillars on the corners. So one diagonal from the corner, you're going to go up three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. One, two, three. One, two, three. The next thing we're going to do is on the long side of the cabin, we're going to put a beam going from one post to the other. And it, they all have to be horizontal like this. So I put the first block, I break it, and then I put the second one so that the end of the log sticks out. And just do that on both sides. Nice. Next, we're going to do the outline of the roof. So where your log faces out, put a stair going up next to it and another stair on top, then a stair underneath. So it makes that Z type shape, a oak wood plank on top of that one, a stairs here, a stairs underneath, a stairs on top, and then two oak wood planks to top it off. So you can see we're already starting to get that nice bell shape. So do the same thing on the other side. Stair going up, stair on top, a stair underneath to make that Z shape a plank, a stair on top of the plank, another upside down stair like that, and one right side up stair. So you can see we've already got that nice outline to the roof. Next we do this little overhang, which is just two uh, oak slabs diagonal. So just like this. And from this corner piece, we're gonna carry it all the way around to the other side right here. And connect it up and finish it off with a stair. Uh, we're gonna do the other side first and then we'll do the bell on this side. So I'm going one slab, two slabs beneath, coming all the way out to three for this first one. And then I do the second one. It's just a bit easier for me that way and connect it all the way back up here with this guy and the stair. And now let's do the rest of the bell for this side of the roof. Same thing as the other stair on top, upside down stair. We're gonna do a oak wood plank, stair on top, stair upside down, stair on top, two wood planks. And same thing on this side, stair on top, stair underneath, oak wood planks, stair on top, stair underneath, 
oak wood. Next, we're going to build up the walls. Uh, within the frame. This was another technique that I picked up from Corrales's video. So another thank you to him. Uh, it's called texturing and it's when you mix several similar looking blocks together to make a really neat mixed pattern. So just on this side here is where our wall is going to go and you can see I've got oak wood planks, oak logs, stripped oak logs, and spruce wood planks in my hot bar and I'm just going to pretty much randomly cycle between these things to kind of create a neat pattern. Uh, one thing I do like to do, though, is with the corners, I like to alternate logs, a strip log, then an oak log, kind of like you would see in a wooden cabin where the logs get stacked um, opposite to each other. And so you get that neat effect uh, just in the corners. And then everything else is kind of randomized, so... You can see I'm just placing uh, pretty much random blocks. Don't be afraid of the spruce wood, even though it's a bit darker. Just kind of like that to create a pattern. Sorry, I didn't have my daylight cycle on. Uh, so yeah, we're just continuing along, doing some nice patterns. Uh, this is the corner, so we're going to do the same thing we did over there. We did stripped. Uh, so here we'll do the oak log facing that way, the strip log facing or maybe we want to keep it in line with the other side so on this side we have the end the side and the end so we're going to go the end the side and the end and then we're just going to keep going with our random ish pattern i, I try to avoid doing doubles next to each other, but it's fine if you do. You just kind of want it to look a little random. So with this side, we're going to go all the way up behind the uh, bell. So you can see I'm doing the ends uh, in the corners again, but now once I get to this beam, I'm just going to switch to whatever uh, random pattern again. And you can see you kind of get a wall that looks like this. So now we're just going to do that on the other two sides of the wall. There is really little. With that one, you can see I just deleted it because uh, for whatever reason, I just didn't want two strip logs. But just kind of play with the palette until you get something that you like. I think that's looking all right. Okay, so now we've got all the walls in. And so we're just going to knock out the uh, three blocks here for where the chimney is going to go. Okay, so for the fireplace, we're using a similar technique to the wood, but we're using cobblestone, stone, and andesite, as well as gravel. So I like to make these three uh, gravel, because this is going to be the hearth. And then you put two cobblestone walls like this, with uh, iron bars in the middle. And this is going to be like the grate of the fireplace. We'll also need some cobble stairs. And this is going to form kind of like the mantle of the fireplace like that. And then your campfire goes here on the other side. But you're going to put a hay bale underneath because that'll make the smoke travel up higher. And now what we're doing is we're basically just creating this shape around the fire and mixing in andesite and regular stone with the cobblestone. 
So we're also breaking out the pieces of the beam here so that the chimney can keep going up. Now you'll notice that from in here, this part is uh, still open. So what I did was I took a spruce trap door and this is kind of tricky, but you have to get into the fireplace, put it down and then flip it up so that it covers the smoke. And for the next block up, what we've done is we've created a support beam that goes across the entrance. So from here, just going all the way across and it's going to stop right there. And so that's kind of how to cover up that inside. For the next block up, we're just using some stairs again. They can be uh, mixed or if you like all cobble on the inside, that's fine too. Whatever you think looks best. From this beam, we're going to go five blocks up and that's how high the chimney will be. So we've got one already and we're just filling in this part now. So this is two. going to grab my cobblestone again. Three, four, and you can see I'm just kind of like randomly picking each one, and five. Okay, then we're just going to cap this off with four stairs facing towards the smoke, and same strategy, um, but with stairs instead of blocks, so maybe some andesite, oops, andesite. Cobblestone, cobblestone, and stone. And that's our chimney. Next, we're just going to fill in the roof. So I've got spruce wood slabs, spruce wood planks, and spruce stairs. And all you're going to do is look for the mate or the oak guide we've had and just walk across with spruce for every level. So here's a stair. So we're just going to go stair all the way across. Here's a stair, stair all the way across. Looks like we made a mistake here, just going to replace this with an oak stair. Okay. Okay, so now we've basically got the shape of it and we got the roof on. Next, we're gonna do doors and windows. So I used oak doors and white glass panes. Uh, so the front doors are just these four. And from the inside, you place the doors, it leaves that nice little hearth. And another touch that I added was the two blocks above the doors. I just traded for oak logs. Um, facing outwards like this. You can see it kind of adds like a nice framing of the door. We've put the door in here. We're going to go around to the other side and put the windows in. So one window goes here, one block above. And you're going to count one, two blocks up, and the second window goes here. And I like white uh, glass panes. But you can put whatever you want. Uh, you can do panes, or if you prefer a different look, you can put spruce fences. And some people do that. It kind of looks like this. So yeah, you can decide which one you look. This one makes it look more like a contemporary cabin, and this one maybe looks makes it look a bit more uh, medieval. Next, I'm going to put a little separator between the floors from the outside. So I'm using spruce stairs and slabs, a spruce stair like this, and then you connect it uh, so that this becomes a corner stair, two slabs, and then same on the other side. So it just creates like a very subtle uh, line between the two floors, and you do the same thing on the front. So we're on the front with the doors, same thing. Spruce stair spruce stair so that they becomes the corner two slabs there we go this is going to help us figure out where the double doors on the second floor will go so and i also knocked out these two 
And I like the top doors to be flush with the house because uh, as a little decorative touch, I put a spruce trap door um, on top of the doors like that. A lot of people do this kind of thing. Just makes it look uh, more textured. So this is great because it helps us know where the floor is going to be on the inside. So we're going to get some oak slabs. And just fill in the floor uh, so that it's flush with the beam. Okay, so just filling in the slabs. So now we've got a second floor and this corner uh, is where our ladder will go. So I picked this front corner next to the fireplace where the door is, two, three, four, and we just get a nice ladder coming up here. Next, we're gonna do the nice overhang that comes up over the front. So you do uh, your little garden beds and put spruce trap doors up against the side of them. Oops, this one is wrong. Just one over like that. And then a stripped oak log facing up here. Uh, this will be where our beams come out. Then we're gonna take some spruce fence and put two of them on top of each of these, one, two. Then on top of this fence, we're gonna put uh, some stairs like this. Oops, sorry. Just two stairs coming out from the house like that. And an oak wood slab coming across the front like this. Then the rest of the floor is going to be spruce slabs. Like that. We're going to use oak trap doors to uh, do the railing. And in the corners, we're going to put oak logs uh, facing outwards. So if you've been following the tutorial exactly, uh, you'll have some interior work to do. So um, this floor should be filled in like that. So you can half slab that there. And these four, two, three, four, you're just gonna pop out and you're gonna replace it with wall blocks whichever ones, just the four randomized ones we had been using. Uh, and these blocks here are gonna be your windows on this side. So you have one window, one window, one, our other window here. And now if we come up here, you'll see that now we have random blocks, but that's okay. This is all gonna be covered up by the bunk beds. Uh, other things we need to do up here is take out these two corner blocks and replace them with stairs like this. That's going to let us put chests down here and still open them up, but it won't look any different from the outside. And there's a little gap above the window here, so we're going to put in some spruce slabs to close that up. Just like that. We're gonna have to do a little expansion here to make room for the bunk beds. So just knock out uh, this part of the roof and this part of the roof. And from the outside, we're also gonna knock out these stairs. So from here, we're actually gonna also take out these stairs, and then we're gonna do this pattern. Spruce wood planks, stripped oak log facing us. Get rid of those. Oak wood planks, spruce stripped oak log facing us oak wood planks, stripped oak log facing us, spruce wood planks. Next, we're gonna put in the windows. So we're gonna take spruce wood stairs and put them like that so that the back's facing this log. We're gonna put a white stained pane over the stripped log and then oak wood planks, white stained glass, oak wood planks, white stained glass, oops, sorry, white stained glass, and more stairs on this side. On top of the windows, we're going to put spruce stairs, then oak stairs like this, and spruce stairs, just like that. The stairs that are diagonal here, so this is the edge of the roof, this is the block, and this is the new window. 
we're going to change the direction of that so that it makes a little corner. And you're going to do that on this side too. And then we're just going to finish this thing off with some spruce wood slabs, just like that. And now we have to detail these windows a bit more. We're just going to add some spruce trap doors for shutters. So in order to make the bunk beds, you have to put two blocks down, put the top bed first, break the blocks and put the bottom bed underneath. And so do that for all three of them. And then we just take some oak trap doors and put them on the back like this. And then to make the top beds usable, they need a block next to them that you can wake up to. So I like to put a barrel uh, there because you get extra storage and it kind of looks like a nightstand. And now on the other side of this room, I like to use spruce trap doors to make a shelf. Make sure that you're not on this block, but this block below it. And you just put that shelf all the way across. And this way you can put stuff on top of the shelf like this. Um, I do chests and then you're going to use a piston to push this chest in. So you get the piston set up like this, put a lever on it. And now the chest pushes in and it goes side by side, but it doesn't join the chests. And do the same on this side. And I just like to put a barrel in the middle and kind of maximize that storage space. Now underneath here, I like to put two more barrels and two more chests. So this way everyone gets a chest. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five barrels. So people can share the barrels. Now we're in the main floor, so we're gonna put in our staples. You can rearrange this however you want. A crafting table, furnace, stone cutter, grindstone, um, anvil. And then I just put down chests in the corners and some more uh, shelves. So remember to always be on the block below like this in the corners and then put some more storage up there. And uh, I like to put some chests above the mantle, a little finishing touch, a carpet of your choosing in front of the fireplace to make it that much more luxurious. Now we're gonna add on our exterior Areas. So this side with the fireplace is the stables. So we're going to take cobblestone wall, bring it out to the edge of the wall and connect it with a spruce fence. We're going to put two oak fence gates there, some more cobblestone wall, and just connect that cobblestone wall up to the fireplace like that. Same thing on this side, cobblestone, oak fences, cobblestone wall, and connect it up to the roof with the spruce fence. And there we have our stables, so you can put horses in here. I like to put a chest down here so you can store all your stable-related stuff. Now we're going to hop over to the other side. For this side, I imagine someone coming back from an adventure and just unloading all their gear. Uh, so this is more storage-oriented. You do two barrels and then the cobblestone wall, and then you're going to connect that up and mirror that on the other side. Two barrels, cobblestone wall, and the spruce fence. Sometimes I like to uh, mix and match the barrels. So instead of them all looking the same, you can put them in different directions. Uh, then I have three spruce trap doors here. I have a cartography table on this side with a chest next to it and an item frame for your favorite map. Then I add uh, some chests up here for more storage. And that's the basics. This next part is my favorite part of the build. And it's kind of like a little cellar door, like an old timey cellar that opens up on the outside of the house. So you need uh, three by one and centered in this area. And you're just going to uh, mix and match cobblestone stairs, mossy cobblestone, stone brick, mossy stone brick and regular stone stairs however you want into this well leaving one block just so you can walk back here
Oh, and I like to uh, turn these front blocks so that they go like this. I put a little spruce trap door on the front, and then you're going to make your stairs leading down, just like that. And this could be a mine. This could be where you put your enchanting room. Uh, it could really be whatever you want. Okay, so for these outdoor awnings, uh, I like to light under these beams that we had. Kind of gives it a nice basic coverage. So we're going to repeat that on the other side. Uh, it's a little different here because we have the fireplace. But you just skip the middle one and come out to the far one there. And you can add some lights there if you want. For the front, I like to put the lanterns on these two oaks. And in this middle row, we're going to add a spruce slab to the bottom so that we can hook the lanterns on. So you, you see it comes out a bit more. And now we can hook the lanterns on the bottom, just like that. Now for the back, we've actually done this uh, cool kind of thing coming out of the end. I like it. Maybe it's kind of weird, but uh, it's just two spruce slabs like this and then a trap door on the end. And the lantern goes on the edge there, just like that. I think it looks kind of neat. For the interior, we have two spots, one there and one right there. Makes for nice lighting. And going up to the top, uh, I put a lantern at the foot of each bed. It doesn't interfere with sleeping. I've tested it. And also uh, just one on top of each of those barrels. So now everything is nice and well lit. The next thing we're going to do is add a bit of foliage. So I've got some oak leaves here. I've got some uh, grass seeds. I've got some bone meal. I've got some sweetberry bushes and some azure bluette. I don't know how to say that, but you can just pick whatever your favorite flower is, and I put them in these planters. I kind of use the oak leaves to fill in corners, so um, there's no like exact science to it, but just kind of creating these uh, bushes along the corners like this, just kind of placing them in, stepping back. Yeah, that looks okay. Um, same thing along the back, you know, up against the wall, up in the corner up the wall a little bit, maybe all the way up, who knows. Just kind of like that. And that kind of looks okay. Uh, and that's it for the bushes. Next I'll do a little bit of paths. So just kind of, you, you don't want to be perfectly straight, you know, missing. I tend, I like to miss a few grass blocks here and there, things like that. I'll do the same uh, in front of the stables. Just kind of like that. Make it look like people have been uh, walking here. Just something like that. And same with our gear area. A bit more uh, closed off with this one, I guess. Because it's uh, people would be walking in there a lot. Next, uh, we're just going to do some uh, sweetberry bushes. I like these kind of in little clusters all together. I have my tick speed turned up so those will grow really fast. Just like little shrubs like that. Maybe there's, that looks good. Just little clusters, one or two together here or there. You can put them wherever you want. Uh, this is another nice trick I like to do is you can uh, knock out the block underneath one of the leaves and put water there and then put the dirt back so it's hidden like that and then turn these into farmland and then plant some seeds. I find that the fully grown wheat looks nice plus if this is an early cabin for you uh, it's nice to have food sources around. So maybe over here I'll go underneath the pillar. I'll put the water there. And same thing. 
just some nice wheat kind of in a random pattern. It just makes it look a little more lived in. Uh, I might do a little one back here somewhere. It's different every time you do it, so don't get too worried about doing the exact same places. I'm sure however you do it, it'll look really cool and uh, it'll be your own. You'll be really, hopefully you're, you're really happy with it. Just like that. And if you don't like it, you can just knock a few out. It's too much. Then the last thing I'll do is to just go around and bone meal it. So you get a little bit of grass, you punch out the flowers. Just like that, punch out the flowers. Also, if the you don't like the ferns, you can punch those out too. Just like that. And then you might uh, want to make a few tall grasses here, there, maybe a tall fern. I don't know. Whatever, that's a nice spot there. Just whatever you think looks good. Maybe this guy. And you can see the the cabin starts to come together a little bit with the foliage added to the outside. The uh, finishing touches here is uh, a lot of people do this. They'll put pod saw in the stables just to make it, you know, look like the horse was here. And I actually like to mix in coarse dirt and gravel that texturing idea. I like the gravel under the walls. Oops. Just gonna get our wall back. Get that lantern back on there. Yeah, so it kind of looks a bit more like a horse might be in there. And if the pod saw is too uniform, it can be nice just to put a few coarse dirt in there. The last little detail for the horse stables is some hay. I like to put in a cauldron, which is useful if you ever need a cauldron. And this is a trick I've seen so many builders do. I think I've learned this from Grian. You put the hay bale, the cauldron, and the tripwire hook looks like a faucet. And same thing on the side. I like to do symmetry like that. And with that final touch, our cabin is done. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have a great time in the new Nether update. And hopefully you and your friends can really enjoy this starter cabin for the next update. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, I'm Retro Buddy. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications. If you have any requests for tutorials, please put them in the comments. I'm just starting this YouTube channel, so I'm happy to take redstone or building requests uh, for anyone trying to figure something out that needs some help. Thanks, and see you in the next video.